Hi, I'm Chris Bradshaw from Hexagon. During this video, we will take our now complete pressure vessel model and run the full analysis, including the application of the environmental loadings, as well as all of the internal and external pressure calculations. We'll take a look at the reports that PVLE presents, and then we'll see how we can resolve any issues that are presented to us in those reports. All right, so we're now ready for the analysis. So to perform the analysis, we can hit on the running man button up on the ribbon shown here. And before we can run the analysis, we must save the file. So I've selected a suitable folder just on my local C drive here. And I'm going to give this example a name. Uh, let's call it storage vessel 001. And then I'll hit save and the analysis will now run. So during the analysis, any critical issues are highlighted as warnings, as we can see here. We have one, the skirt is locally overstressed by the chair or compression ring. We have a second one, the cone to shell junction is not adequate. And then when the analysis is complete, the output is shown to us. As you can see, some of the reports listed in the output are highlighted in red. The vessel design summary is shown in red because we have an issue, the local stress which we know about on the skirt and the base ring calculations will show us more detail on that as we can see here. So let's take a look at the base ring first of all. We also have an issue with the conical section uh, which we know. The conical section also highlighted in red but on the base ring I can see that the issue is the combined local plus bending stress in the worst load case and that is 5664 megapascals. However I can also see that the local stress in the skirt due to the gussets is contributing 5656 megapascals out of that total. It's the weight plus the bending stress is only 8 megapascals, so it's by far this is the issue, the local stress in the skirt due to those gussets. So I need to do something about that, maybe thicken the gussets up, add some more gussets, uh, or do whatever to make that acceptable. So let's close the output and return to the input. And on the input I'm going to go to perform base ring analysis. Selecting that field that will again display the dialog box showing the base ring information and in an attempt to more evenly redistribute that local stress that is around the gussets I'm going to add a continuous top plate. For the moment I'm going to accept the default geometry for the continuous top plate so we've got a 45mm thick top plate and so forth. When I click OK there I can see the top plate and that local stress that was concentrated around the gussets here should be more evenly redistributed hopefully that will be sufficient to resolve our first issue so let's hit analyze once more I do get a warning about the cone to shell junction not being adequate but I, when I hit OK that was the only warning I get and there is now no longer any issue with the base ring as you can see on the base ring calculations no more red text everything is acceptable on the base ring okay so I could go and look in detail at the reports but for this example I'm not going to there's no red text so that's sufficient so let's jump to the conical section report and once again here I'm just going to scroll down quickly until I see some red text so I need some additional reinforcement on the large end of the cone. I need another 125 and a half square millimeters. And on the moment of inertia calculations at the large end, I see I have 0.173 to the 6 millimeters to the 4 available, but I need 0.23 to the 7 millimeters to the 4. But as we saw with the nozzle earlier, PV leak doesn't just tell me that there's an issue. It also gives me advice on how to resolve it and it's telling me here if I add a stiffening ring of this size, a bar shape, 9.5 by 88.9 millimeters, that will provide me sufficient area 
and moment of inertia to resolve my issues here on the large end of the cone. If I scroll down further, I also see I've got the same issue at the small end of the cone. I need more moment of inertia and I need a slightly smaller shape um, at the smaller end of the cone, 6.3 by 63.5. So I now have some issues at the large end and the small end of the cone, but what I also know is how to resolve those. So I'm going to once more close down the output and return to the input and add some stiffening rings, one at the large end, one at the small end of the cone to resolve those issues. So at the large end of the cone, let's select the cylinder where we wish to attach it. We'll attach this right at the top of the cylinder, close to the cone, and add a stiffening ring. Okay, so we could choose a standard bar from the database or we could enter in the geometry for the bar itself. So I'm going to enter in the geometry and at the large end we were 9.5 by 88.9 so let's make this 10 mil thick slightly bigger than our 9.5 required so that will be sufficient and for the outside diameter it will be 2 times 88.9 or 180 near enough added on to the inside diameter which is the same as the OD of the vessel of course so that would be 2644 that gives us a bar size 10 by 90 which is just about the same as our 9.5 by 88.9 this of course needs to resolve the issue at the top of the cone to shell junction so I'm going to check the box to specify this is a cone to shell junction ring according to the ASME standards and that means well this must be within 27.5 millimeters of the junction so I need to adjust the distance and on the 3 meter shell, if I move this to 980, that is 20 millimeters from the junction. That text now turns blue. This is a cone to shell junction ring. I can hit OK. And if I spin the model around, there we can see our first cone to shell junction ring at the large end of the cone. Let's now do the same at the small end. So selecting the shell connection, placing a stiffening ring and once again I'm going to manually specify the geometry by typing the dimensions here. So this was a slightly smaller ring it was 6.3 by 63.5 so I'm going to round that up to 7 millimeters thick and it needs to be 63.5 which I'm going to round up to 65 so two lots of 65 is 130 added on to the 1270 inside diameter gives me a 1400 mil outside diameter giving me a bar 7 by 65 again slightly larger than the recommendation from PV lead once again this is a cone to shell junction ring so I'll check the box meaning the maximum distance can be 16.4 millimeters so let's move this 15 millimeters from the junction everything is blue so this is a cone to shell junction ring according to ASME it's okay and there is my small ring at the top. That should have resolved our second issue so when I hit the analyze button this should be for the final time. And we see no messages, no warnings, everything is acceptable and now in the output I can see none of my reports are listed in red. I have one orange report which is the warning that we always get when working in metric just to inform us that PV Leap performs all calculations in imperial units internally in order to remain compliant with the ASME standard and the built-in assumptions within those formula. But the finalized results that we see are reflected to show our selected metric units. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. But remember, if you do have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Hexagon. Thanks for watching.